I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a foldable weight bench. Like everybody else, we've been home a whole lot more over the last few months than we expected to be. So we decided to make a really simple gym in our garage so we can continue to work out and take care of ourselves. But we do need this to be a functional garage, so we started buying some equipment that can fold against the wall to get it out of the way when we need to pull the car in. We invested in some of the equipment. We bought some things that were really high quality because we wanted to make sure that they would be nice and sturdy and long lasting. We bought this rack, we bought some weights and some barbells, but there's a few other things that are really handy in the gym that I didn't really want to spend money on. So I've got a few projects coming up that are accessories for the gym area, and we're gonna do one of those today. The big constraint is that all of these things need to be able to fold away or hang on a wall or push out of the way so we can pull the car in. Let's get to it. The first of the projects we're going to make is a really simple weight bench with some folding legs. That way we can flatten it out and hang it on the wall. I modeled it in Fusion 360 and from that was able to make a simple drawing with all of the angles, the lengths of all the pieces, so I have everything I need here to start cutting metal. We're going to start with some 2 inch square tubing, cut it down on the bandsaw, and then we can do some welding. Got a few of these pieces cut, and this is much thicker gauge steel than what we actually need for this, but it's what we could get locally. So this thing's gonna end up being pretty heavy and heavy duty. I mentioned I might hang this on the wall earlier, and it'll probably instead actually lean against the wall, but it will definitely do its job, and it's gonna be plenty strong. These legs are gonna flare out just a little bit, so I wanna add an angle to the cuts for the tops and the bottom of both of the leg pieces. Of course, you don't have to have a band saw to do this. You could cut these pieces with an angle grinder. One of the cool things about this saw is you can actually change the angle of this piece. So we need the legs to be at a three degree pitch and we need to cut that angle on the top and the bottom of each leg. So we can set the saw to three degrees and then cut the pieces. Now that I've got one of these cut, I need to make the same angle on the other end facing the same direction so that the leg has a parallel top and bottom when it's setting at an angle underneath the bench. The next thing, now that we have the legs cut, is to figure out how to make the panel that goes on the outside of them, and that's gonna allow them to hinge. Now I worked in Fusion to make sure that I could find the pivot point where the hole needed to be, and where the whole thing could move freely and not catch in either one of its up or its down positions. Since I did that work in Fusion, I'm gonna go ahead and print out that piece as a template, and then I'm gonna cut it out of MDF just to double check in the real world to make sure it moves like I expect. Trying to mark where it's gonna interact with the leg so I know exactly where it's gonna be when I pivot it so I can make sure that the leg will sit flush against the bottom of this bracket. The template I made mostly works. It gets really close and ends up touching right there before we get these two parallel. So I think all I really need to do is knock off this inside corner a little bit just to be able to move it forward. I think I've got the template figured out and everything seems to move correctly. One thing we are gonna do here, just to make sure that there's plenty of room for the whole thing to move, is actually enlarge these holes a little bit. Josh had the idea of making them bigger and letting there be some slop. Gravity is gonna end up holding everything in place when the legs are extended, but then that slop will give you room to be able to fold them and make sure everything can close as needed. So I'm gonna enlarge these holes and to go ahead and copy this onto some steel and cut out four of them.
I've got all these plates ground down to their final shape and I added a bevel so they're not sharp to the touch. I've got two of them clamped onto the leg here with a bolt running through and you can see that there's no gap down here now, which is awesome. And when you fold it up, the bottom of the leg sits on both sides. So this thing is good to go. We just need to tack it in place. Now that I've got both of these leg assemblies on and they're pivoting correctly, the next thing is to put the feet on. This is another piece of bar that I cut down that's just gonna go right here. And this is why I cut the same angle on the top and the bottom of the leg, so that this piece is actually parallel to the center bar and to the floor. I do want to point out that you probably shouldn't be welding in a t-shirt. I just got excited and didn't think about it, but I'm going to put on my jacket to finish it up. Now that I've got those welded on, these things are pretty good to go, but they do still pivot, and you don't want that to happen while you're actually using the bench. So the next thing is gonna to be to drill a through hole right here, and then we're gonna use a pin that can go through there with a ball on the end, and that'll lock it in this position so it won't collapse on you. I'm waiting on those pins to show up, so we're not gonna do that right now. The next thing is to actually add some supports across here, sticking out, so that when you put the top of the bench on it, it won't be able to roll off of the center support. So I've got some pieces of angle iron. I'm gonna cut some slots in here, drop these down in to make some wings that will support the top. I'm gonna cut down this angle iron and I put some 45 degree bevels on it so that when it's sitting underneath the bench, you don't have this sharp corner sticking out. Cut this down on the bandsaw and then I'll knock it into place. Once I get this piece centered where I want, I'm gonna tack it in place, but you'll notice that the top of the bar actually sits above the whole center support. That's okay, because we're gonna add a dado to the bottom of the plywood that will sit on top of these supports and touch the actual center bar as well. With these things welded on, the metal working is just about done. I'm gonna drill some holes for those locking pins to go through, and then after that, I'm gonna take this holding apart, clean up the surface, get rid of the mill scale so I can paint it. And to paint it, I'm gonna use an enamel paint so it should be nice and strong and last through a lot of wear and tear. I've got the dado stack set up on the table saw so that we can cut some little slots here for those metal brackets to set into. Of course, you could avoid this completely if you wanted to by just cutting more material out of the steel instead and making those brackets sit a little bit lower. But since I've got this set up, I'm gonna go ahead and make these so that I can put these two pieces together. The last thing for this weight bench is to add the top. I wanna to add a cushion to that. I'm gonna use some thick upholstery foam. This is one inch thick, dense foam. And I'm gonna put that on the piece of wood with some spray adhesive and then wrap it with some marine vinyl. This should hold up fine to a whole lot of sweat and moisture. I'm just gonna staple this on the underside of the wood.
After a little bit of filing, I got those pins to fit in there nice and tight, so this thing is held in place just fine. The last thing is to add some feet to the bottom of these tubes so this metal doesn't tear up the mats or the floor in the gym. In this case, we 3D printed some little caps, and these are going to go right on here. There's a little bit of gap on the inside of them just so we can get them on and off. And to fix that, I'm going to actually add some hot glue on the inside of this before I put them on. That will keep them in place just fine, but if I ever need to replace them or change them out, I can easily pull them off. This is it. It's completely finished and it works great. I will say that early on, I was a little worried that there was gonna be too much play left and right because we made those holes bigger so that the legs could fold up. But once I tighten the nut and bolt down, this thing is super sturdy. Now, of course, if I do wanna fold the legs up, I'll probably have to loosen those just a little bit, but luckily I don't plan on doing that a whole lot. It's kind of in case of an emergency, in case I really need to get this out of the way and fold those legs up. But luckily, we can push all this stuff just up against the wall. We can set this up against the wall and still fit the car in here. We've got a whole bunch of other things to do in this area to make it a usable gym space. If you've got some ideas for other projects you'd like to see here, maybe storage for all of the weights, let me know down in the comments. We've also got tons of other types of projects that you may be interested in, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The drawing here with all of the links that, dang it. I got all these gr grates plowed. Got all these grates plowed down. Ah! What's happening? Oh, it's unplugged. It's completely melted the... <laughs> I'm gonna end up spraying this thing with a perf... with, 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 with... Paint.